Let's define one of the most important concepts in microeconomics, the marginal product. We have a two-factor production model with a given production function. Y is some function of x1 and x2. We then define the marginal product of the first factor, denoted by mp1, as the partial derivative of f with respect to x1. Similarly, the marginal product of the second factor, mp2, is defined as the partial derivative of f with respect to x2. The marginal products are to the production function what the marginal utilities are to the utility function, just simple partial derivatives. Keep in mind that marginal products only exist if the production function is differentiable. For example, if we have a production function where the factors are perfect complements, then the marginal products are not defined at the corners of the isoquants. The min function is not differentiable if the arguments are equal. Also, keep in mind that the marginal products depend on the amount that we use of the production factors x1 and x2. Here is a simple example of marginal product using a Cobb-Douglas production function. y is equal to 100 square root of x1, x2. To find mp1, we do the partial derivative of f with respect to x1. The derivative of square root of x1 is 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x1. 100 divided by 2 is 50, so mp1 is 50 times the square root of x2 over x1, which is defined for all values of x1 and x2 as long as x1 is strictly positive. Similarly, mp2 is equal to 50 times the square root of x1 over x2. mp1 is defined as the partial derivative of f with respect to x1, or if you like, the partial derivative of y with respect to x1, same thing. If we increase the amount that we use of the first production factor, x1, by a small amount, denoted by delta x1, while at the same time keeping the amount that we use of the second production factor, x2, fixed, then there will be a small increase in the amount that we produce of the output, which we denote by delta y. The ratio delta y over delta x1 will be approximately equal to the partial derivative dy dx1 if delta x1 is small. Therefore, mp1 is approximately equal to the increase in y if we increase x1 by a small amount, delta x1. If we multiply both sides by delta x1, we have delta y is approximately equal to mp1 times delta x1. You can think of mp1 as an amplifier for the first production factor. If mp1 is 5, for example, and you increase x1, then y will increase by 5 times as much, as long as this increase is small. If delta x1 is equal to 1, and this is a small change in x1, then delta y is approximately equal to mp1. Therefore, we tend to think of mp1 as a number telling us how much production will increase if we increase the amount of the first production factor by one unit. Everything we have said on this slide can be reformulated in terms of mp2 and changes in x2 keeping x1 fixed. So we think of mp2 as the increase in production when we increase x2 by one unit keeping x1 fixed. The law of diminishing marginal product states that the marginal product of factor 1, mp1, is eventually a decreasing function in x1 if we keep x2 fixed, and that mp2 is eventually decreasing in x2 for x1 fixed. Let's think about what this means. Say that we have a medical facility producing health services. We produce health services using capital, such as x-rays, needles, and antibiotics, and labor provided by doctors, nurses, and other support staff. We group all these factors into two, capital and labor. Let's think about the amount of health services that we can produce if we keep capital fixed and vary the amount of labor. Imagine that we begin with a reasonable amount of labor appropriate for the facility. Increasing the amount of labor by a small amount in this situation will typically not cause too many problems. As we keep on increasing the amount of labor, the facility will eventually be very crowded, making it more difficult for staff to get access to equipment. 
An increase in labor when the amount of labor is already very high will not increase the number of patients treated as much as an increase in labor when the amount of labor is at a more appropriate level for the facility and the marginal product of labor is lower. As you keep on increasing the amount of labor, it is possible or even likely that marginal product will eventually become zero or even negative. You will then produce less health services by increasing the amount of labor beyond this overcrowded amount. Keep in mind that the law of diminishing marginal product does not claim that the marginal product of a production factor is always decreasing in the amount used of this factor. It is possible that MP1, say, is initially increasing in X1. In our example, this would likely be the case. With a very small amount of labor, increasing the amount of labor would have a very small effect. You need a certain amount of labor to make the facility working properly. The law of diminishing marginal product is, in a sense, an obvious result. Factors of production are best used in certain proportions, and if one of them is much higher, then increasing it even more will have a very small effect on output. It's hard to think of even one example where the law of diminishing marginal product would fail. A few mathematical examples. In my first example, y is 100 square root of x1 times x2. The marginal product of the first factor, mp1, is equal to 50 square root of x2 over x1, which is a decreasing function in x1. You can also convince yourself that mp2 is a decreasing function in x2. Therefore, this production function satisfies the law of diminishing marginal product. In my second example, y is equal to x1 squared x2 squared. mp1 is 2 times x1 times x2 squared, and this is increasing in x1 for all values of x1. This production function does not satisfy the law of diminishing marginal product.